Well, I mean, security checks are, of course, carried out across a whole range of uh, public spaces. I mean, we're, we're, we're probably used to uh, security checks more so at things like airports, public spaces like this. But also at public venues, uh, in terms of Manchester Arena, I mean, they do have security checks. Um, the question is about the rigour and, uh, you know, the, the challenges around getting people through and into uh, a big uh, arena like that while still managing a, a sensible level of, of security. Um, so there are obviously questions around security like that, uh, um, but you know, we, perhaps we'll have a, a longer discussion and, and see and go into some of those details. Another technical detail now, uh, we often talk about CCTV monitoring and I'm sure an arena of th this size would be equipped with the necessary equipment, but it seems that we always only found out about, uh, find out about the uh, suspects or suspect afterwards using the CCTV footage. What could it do? What could these kind of uh, CCTV uh, equipment do to help detect and prevent attacks? Well, as you, as you know, I mean, CCTV, CCTV is now very uh, pervasive. I mean, there are many uh, tens, hundreds, and sometimes thousands of cameras around public spaces and particularly around public uh, arenas. Um, many of those cameras are monitored, or majority of those cameras, but not all of them, are monitored uh, uh, manually. You know, the human operators who survey the scenes around these, these areas. Um, but there's promise. I mean, there's promise in having automated systems, uh, automated technologies and automated assessment of CCTV imagery. So you mentioned here in the case that normally we hear or think about using CCTV after an event. But actually there's a case uh, and the technology does exist today to actually proactively uh, monitor and actually analyze by computer are you uh, saying, images coming from CCTV Are you saying cameras. in the case of the uh, Manchester Arena attack, the CCTV was not uh, functioning while the, uh, the whole event was unfolding? Uh, this is my first question. Secondly, uh, how did people find out about uh, uh, Adebi? Uh, were they using CCTV footage somewhere, maybe, if not in the arena? Well, you have to ask the, the owners of the arena um, about, uh, to comment about the availability or, or usage of CCTV uh, at the venue at the time. I can't comment on mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. What I can comment on is how we can better exploit the use of CCTV. Now, you mentioned about using it after an event, but actually before an event, if the authorities know uh, they have someone of interest, let's say, so in this case I think we know or the authorities probably have a good idea, and obviously they did know and they've released the name um, of, the, of the terrorist, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the person involved, um, if they actually had an identity there, you know, uh, let's say a facial image or, or, or even a full body image, it's possible in theory to, to actually process uh, images from cameras at the venue, but even perhaps even before the venue in other public spaces, for example, at the Victoria train station and other areas, uh, through which the, uh, the, the person would have actually travelled. So there's a, there's a promise that, you know, uh, someone who's known could be detected or recognized before they reach the venue. So now, at this moment... A, uh, an yes. analogy here, you may have yeah. heard of the phrase, of course. Yeah, so at this moment yes. we actually do so not an have example, any CCTV have footage the, to help yes. us identify the suspect. Is that what you're saying? And this is quite unbelievable because I think CCTV well, is no, relatively, I, uh, you know, very uh, mature technology. I. Oh, well, no, I, I think that's not true. I mean, I, I can't say I can't comment on the availability of CCTV from the, from the arena, mm -hmm. but certainly in public spaces near the arena, mm -hmm. um, there will be CCTV. And of course, the yeah. security services and the police will be looking very closely at that CCTV sure. in order to determine where that offender came from, um, who they travelled with, if anybody, and also who they spoke to. So are there any accomplices uh, in this act? Yeah. Uh, what about the bigger role, let's say, because right now we are often talking about a lone wolf situation and many of the materials or much of the information that they get about how to carry out this kind of attack is from the internet. So uh, CCTV in this digital age where everything is sure. done digitally, yes. uh, is there any use at all in helping monitoring this kind of perpetrator? Well, CCTV is just part of the part of the uh, equation in terms of uh, helping the security forces and uh, the police to track and identify people who may commit a, a terrorist offence. In relation to uh, the internet, of course, the authorities do monitor how people access the internet. Uh, in particular, they would be interested in persons who perhaps search for materials, for example, bomb manuals and things like this. 
but also they would be interested in persons who buy materials, certain kinds of materials which are known to be used in bombs. Mm -hmm. The other aspect is actually communication. So rather than just purchasing items and researching items of, uh, around bombs, it's actually about communication. So for example, with a lone wolf, they may not know at the time who that individual is, but they may know other people whom, to whom they connect. So for yeah. example, if that lone wolf had at any time attempted to communicate with somebody they yes. were aware of, uh, who, who had an interest in terrorism, mm -hmm. they could obviously um, they could identify and track the person through those means. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor James Ferryman of Computational Vision from the University of Reading, and Mr. Wang Xingang. Let me come to you first. Sure. Now, first of all, um, the uh, security level of Great Britain is raised to critical, the third time in history. Do you think more stringent security checks will become kind of a new normal of people's lives now? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, the current um, status has changed to critical. That is purely because based on the current investigation, what we see is um, uh, either this killer has designed and built the bomb by himself or someone else has been given this bomb to him. And currently, both the government and also the police authority, they are unable to rule out the possibility that um, someone else gave the bomb to them. That means there may be someone else are still out there, and this is where uh, the um, um, security status has been changed to a critical. That means currently mm -hmm. the, um, uh, um, the the security service they are out there. Yeah, as yeah. we speak. Now the bomber was the identified as uh, Salman al Debi, a 22-year-old uh, British citizen. And let's not forget on March the 22nd, the Westminster attack was also committed by a British-born man. So why do terrorist attacks keep happening from within and are there any effective actions to prevent domestic terrorism? Uh, I think this is a very good question because what we see is as we evolve, so are the terrorists and then they actually are able to uh, motivate people uh, from, for example, uh, British n uh, nationals trying to actually convince them, trying to become uh, converted into the terrorists. And this is the new challenge that not only Britain, but also the rest of Europe and the rest of the world need to actually work together, trying to look at this is the new norm of the terrorism, how we actually work together to attack it. Now, this terrorist attack, to some degree, has exposed the problem of integrating immigrants in Britain. What difficulties are immigrants facing at this moment, and what's their attitude about Brexit? Um, I think, um, uh, uh, let's look at the communities. Uh, I'm Chinese, as you can see, and then, uh, uh, I came to UK and uh, become part of the uh, society. The Chinese community is a very, uh, one very important part of the British society, and so as all other communities, uh, Muslim communities and other communities. Uh, it depends on individual, how you want to involved and get involved in to become the uh, mainstream of the society. And the uh, uh, British society is very open, very inclusive, and this is where what we see that uh, Brit uh, Britain, the country, is actually very open. It is down to the individual who actually in their personal mm -hmm. circumstances yeah. that we need to uh, see why they're doing things in this way. Yeah, now this attack also happened just weeks before the general election. Was this a coincidence? If not, how do you think the terrorists are trying to affect possibly the election results? Um, first of all, um, uh, I have been uh, um, monitoring the announcement from the government and the police security and uh, currently the organization behind the attack has not been announced. I know there's some media saying that this could be ISIS behind it, but this has not been verified. So what I propose is that let's wait until that uh, the um, uh, authority finish the uh, um, investigation where you know who is behind it and we we'll start to go back and run the analysis on why they're doing this and what is the motive of the bombing. Now, Britain is striving to accelerate the process of leaving EU and one important reason is to keep immigrants or refugees possibly uh, from entering British, Britain to uh, uh, reduce terrorist attacks. After what happened in Manchester, uh, how much do you think Brexit can help stem the spectre of terrorism? 
Um, Brexit currently, what we see is uh, back in March, the uh, government has triggered the Article 50, and there will be another two years process of uh, negotiating about the exit process. Before the uh, um, March of 2019, we do not know what deals has been negotiated. Therefore, currently, it's very difficult to say. But then what we do see is uh, uh, part of the uh, government um, um, discussions uh, and the negotiations with the EU, the uh, uh, cooperation of uh, terrorism and attacking terrorism is absolutely one of the big topics on the table. Finally, after the attack, many countries have agreed to strengthen cooperation against terrorism. What form of cooperation do we have now and what needs to be done more effectively? There are, there are so many things can be done. For example, an, uh, shared uh, information uh, and also uh, different organizations, different security services from each country work together trying to locate the suspect and then trying to make sure that the next attack is not going to happen and also make sure that the communities, not only coming from the local community but also international community, stand together trying to say that uh, you are trying to disturb our life but we are not going to give in, we are not going to be defeated by you.